Hey Kingdom, welcome to the world of Baldur's Gate 3. And today we take a look at awesome sorcerer build. Everyone knows, poison spells is kinda worst spells in Baldur's Gate 3. Because a lot of enemies are resistant to poison and most spells not doing a lot of damage. But this build will be super powerful and will use poison as main damage source. So get ready for awesome poison queen. And also get ready to take your notes. How to make this build yourself and have a lot of fun in Baldur's Gate 3. Let's create our character. For this build we're starting as sorcerer. And also I recommend finding your race that will be proficient with shields. It will increase power of wall build by a lot. But don't worry, you can play without shield pretty normally. You will be just slightly weaker. For Kian trips, we're picking Shocking Grasp to have something to fight in melee range. For your range can trip, you can go with Firebolt or Ray of Frost, or you can go to complete role playing way and get Acid Splash. It got lower damage, but it's Acid damage, it's fun, you know, if you wanna be like Poison Bro, Poison Queen. And also, one more range can trip would be nice too. Or you can get Poison Spray. We will have nice poison stuff in our build, so getting Poison Spray is a really smart idea. And Maybe you want to slow down enemies, so you can get one more range cantrip, but instead I recommend getting Minor Illusion. It will help you pull away enemies, get into some secret places, or just one-shot bosses by throwing them into Chasm. So, for spells, as Sorcerer we get access to two spells, and also we can change our subclass instantly. So, subclass will be Draconic Bloodline Sorcerer. It's just best subclass, if you want a super cool and powerful Sorcerer. Also, Storm Sorcerer is nice, but not for our poison build. So I'm going with Draconic Bloodline, and as Draconic Bloodline, while there's a lot of different ones, I like to take Cold Dragon because it's single spell that we can't learn otherwise. But have you noticed every Dragon Ancestor got this different alignment? So we got Cold, Lightning, and other stuff. And that's why for this build we're picking Green Dragon. And at level 6, spells that deal in poison damage will be more powerful. And we are becoming resistant to poison damage. So that's nice and useful stuff for us. And for our spells, at first level, we're taking Magic Missile to have 100% hit chance if we need to. And Chromatic Orb. Chromatic Orb can be casted with different alignments and we will pick poison most of the time to inflict poison damage. Main abilities for us is Charisma and Constitution. We want to have high health and also ability to keep our concentration. And also as Sorcerer you get proficiency in Constitution saving throws, so that's very nice. And Charisma is our main spellcasting ability to hit targets. Third important stat is Dexterity to get more armor class. So we're maxing out our Charisma to 17, then we're getting 16 Constitution and getting 15 dexterity, that's completely all in build. If you want a uh, like, more balanced one, take 2 points from constitution, get like 2 in wisdom, maybe you can get wisdom to 12 for saving throws, especially very good in honor mod, but you can get out with 16 constitution easily. And so our character is created, how we're leveling this girl up to level 5. So level 2, we get access to one new spell. But honestly, we got everything we need to play with, so instead of getting new spells, you can get exploration stuff like Feather Fall and Enhance Sleep. Right now, I'm picking Feather Fall, getting Meta Magic, and for Meta Magic, we're picking Twin Spell and Distant Spell to give us ability to cast spells from longer range and also to cast two spells at once with the use of sorcery points. Level 3 is good level where we get access to level 2 spells and we can upcast our level 1 spells up to level 2 and again most of the time at this point of the game with this build we will be using our chromatic orb and magic missile most of the time so here good spells is misty step and again enhanced sleep still is not on our list and again i'm just liking getting enhanced sleep because we don't need all other spells for this build exactly, but if you like, you can get other good spells. You know, if you want to cast Scorching Ray, just pick it. It won't hurt you. But for Meta Magic at level 3, we're getting a quickened spell. Now, with the use of Sorcery Points, we can cast spell as bonus action. And that's really useful for our build, you'll understand just in a second. Level 4, that's where we're getting our feet. 
And for first feat, we're going to ability improvement, getting plus one into dexterity to round up this stat and get our armor class higher, and also plus one into charisma for same reason. Also, we get access to one more new cantrip. This cantrip can be any cantrip you like. I like using Ray of Frost or actually at level 4, level 5 and so on, you will face a lot of undeads, so we can use Bone Chill. Bone Chill is really nice cantrip, it will prevent target from healing, and also undead targets will receive disadvantage on attack rolls. That's very useful stuff. And for additional spell, again, I'm liking like utility stuff, so Enhanced Limp will be nice and useful for us right now. And level 5. That's where we're getting our spells from level 3, and there's still kinda no spells that give us some poison damage or other stuff. So here I definitely like picking counter spell to be able to destroy magic of my enemies. That's very powerful stuff, especially very useful in honor mod when someone casting fireball on your party and you just can counter spell it. Very nice one. So how our gameplay will look at level 5. At level 5 we're pretty basic sorcerer with 4 spell slots of level 1, 3 of level 2, 2 of level 3, and 5 sorcery points. Sometime you will need to cast spell with a bonus action with metamagic quickened spell, that's why we're always leaving at least 3 sorcery points to work with. Depending on your playstyle, you will use distant spell or not. And also you will use twin spell or not. I actually recommend using it, because twin spell will use 1 sorcery point per spell slot level, and we can cast, uh, for example, Ray of Sickness or Chromatic Orb with it. Ray of Sickness is a really nice spell, so level 2 Ray of Sickness, we can cast it on two targets and inflict them with poison for two turns, why not? So right now we're not using any creating spell slots of sorcery points, magic, because we don't need to. For our quick access table, we will use Bone Chill on Undeads, that's Cantrip, it's not using any spell slots, and Poison Spray. It is really nice stuff, but you need to be close to cast this. And also problem with Poison Spray, well, it's doing 2d12 damage right now at level 5, pretty like high damage. It got constitution saving throw. So if you're missing the spell, then you're doing kinda like low damage. Actually zero damage, <laughs> so it's like pretty low. There's no, no <laughs> worse damage than zero in this game. So for now, that's kinda questionable cantrip. Nice damage, but very high chance to miss this stuff. Use it only against enemies who got low constitution, and you will just see hit chance. This enemy got high constitution, let me examine. Yeah, constitution 14. So you will feel nice against targets with constitution around like 10. And most of the time you will use like your normal cantrips that use an attack roll like Firebolt, Bone Chill and other stuff to fight with cantrips. In melee range it will be Shocking Grasp. And your spells will be a Ray of Sickness. And it's using attack roll, so you probably will hit it anyway. And there's saving throw only for being poisoned. And Chromatic or Poison is really useful stuff because you will not only hit enemies, but also will create a little bit of this like simple toxin area. And when enemies in this simple toxin area, they possibly will be poisoned. As you can see, we're right now real poison queen. And we will take some damage. So that's cool stuff. And if you need tar like finish targets, go with Magic Missile, of course, 100% hit chance. And now let's finish our build. So level 6, it will be Sorcerer again. We're getting spells. And now it definitely can be any spell you like, you wish to use. So even with some poison stuff, sometime you just need some kind of fireball in your hand. So why not to pick fireball at level 6? Level 7, that's where we get access to spells level 4. And here I would go into more like damaging road and control road. Maybe I will get wall of fire, but actually I like to slow down my enemies when I'm poisoning them. So Ice Storm is really nice pick over here. And also on previous level 6 we got this elemental affinity damage. So now when we're casting poison spells we add in our charisma modifier to the damage, which is pretty nice. Level 8, that's where we're getting one more spell. At level 8 we're kind of finishing Act 2 already, almost almost finishing. And we get into Act 3 where there will be a lot of humanoids. So right now maybe it's nice time to get Hold Person if you haven't picked it already. Nice disable spell, really low level but powerful. And let's talk about our feats right now. 
And this could be like two feats right now. It could be either ability improvement and just max out your charisma, get more stats on your character, or it could be Warcaster. Warcaster gives you advantage on saving throws to maintain concentration spell, and we will be using concentration spell very soon, so it's nice time to pick Warcaster feat. Because level 9, that's where we get access to level 5 spells, and that's where we become a real poison queen. Super crazy damage, cloud kill spell. Most of the players think it's really low damage spell, but that's like one of the most broken spells in the game. I will explain in a second. So, we begin our cloud kill and going to the level 10, where we get an additional cantrip. We don't care, pick anything you like. Additional spell. Again, we don't care, you can pick anything you like. But if you want my suggestions, uh, I would go with some lower level spells because we will keep our high level spell slots for our poison cloud. So focus maybe on actually like super low level spells. Maybe you wish like to push enemies away from you with thunder wave, control battlefield with cloud of daggers and other stuff. Or you can just go to utility way and get knocked to open some doors. Again, pretty useful in later acts. Actually, there's a lot of doors and boxes that you can't lock pick normally. Not all the time, at least. And also we got additional meta magic, and this could be careful spell that will give uh, ability to save on saving throws against some magic for your allies, why not? Or it could be heightened spell, it uses a lot of sorcery points but gives targets disadvantage on their saving throw, so it's useful when you're trying to actually inflict this poison condition, and you can use these three sorcery points on one target, useful against bosses for this disadvantaged stuff, so why not? And level 11, we're getting access to level 6 spells finally, and I will always go for Globe of Invulnerability. Especially if you're playing on Honor mod or other stuff, it's just crazy saving spell just in case you need it. And we're finishing with level 12, again pick any spell you like, go for low level spells, and I would go actually for some like utility daylight it probably will save you a lot of lives and attempts if you're fighting against someone who scared of sun for example probably you will need it and also we're getting one more feat right now if you picked warcaster already then definitely go for ability improvement and max out your charisma so what we have right now Basically, we still get all our spells from previous levels, of course. We got Fireball, Ice Storm, and Hold Person. And I call it like spells just in case spells. Just in case you need this Fireball, you can cast it. Same goes for Ice Storm and Hold Person. Here we got a lot of utility stuff. So we got Minor Illusion Cantrip. We got Knock to open doors. Feather Fall. We can cast it on ourselves and not get damage when we're falling and hence sleep in case we want to like travel a little bit with our jumps and jumps will be really high but we don't even need to jump right now so right now it will be buffs for our team because as a dragon sorcerer you can fly you can basically fly and that's like my favorite class you don't need any tadpoles or other stuff you can always fly that's cool and pick like best position in the fight also we will have 12 sorcery points and i suggest getting like more spell slots from level 2, level 3, but we will use a lot of mag mag magic too. And also just in case you get Globe of Invulnerability to be immune. So why this build is so cool? Because we can get a lot of gear on this lady and she will be super powerful. Let's talk about gear. So that will be my like early game build that I will use. And we got four items in this like complete early game build. You will get it far more sooner than your level 12, of course. You can get it around level 5, level 6. Full build, almost full build. So, first of all, we got Poisoner's Rope. Let me show it to you. So, it's basic rope, and when the wearer casts a spell that deals poison damage, it deals additional 1d4 poison damage. That's just a little bit, but I'm reminding you, you're a sorcerer, you can cast your spells with bonus actions, you can cast them on two targets at once, so in total there's a lot of cool additional damage you will inflict. Also we want to have Poisoner's Gloves, 
Whenever you deal poison damage, the target needs to succeed a constitution saving throw or become poisoned. That's really useful because when we're using, for example, poison spray, it's not actually poisons enemies, it's just a spell which is doing pretty nice damage. But it's doing poison damage, now we get a chance to inflict poison condition to enemies. And same kind of works for most poison spells actually, because you're not actually inflicting poison with most poison spells for some reason. Only a ray of sickness inflicts a real poison. And third item is like most important for this class is Poisoner's Ring. This ring is super important. It gives this action, Virulent Venom. You can use this action every long crest. It's really powerful one. And it states like this. Point your ringed finger at the target to make it vulnerable to poison damage, unless it's immune to poison damage. So there's a lot of targets who are resistant to poison damage, but immune targets uh, is not like a lot of them. So how this stuff works and why it's so cool? It's not looking cool, but when you just click it, you will see that you can cast it three times and you can cast it on three targets or on one target three times. So let's examine this lady and she got poison resistance right now but when we cast this virulent venom if you don't know poison resistance means she will take half damage from poison spells so let's cast this stuff and we're doing three attempts and she saved failed so she failed her save and she failed two times basically that's why it's nice to cast on one target three times and now there is no resistance on this lady and normally normally it just removes her protection so let's cast ray of sickness just normal spell and let's take a look at the damage so what we're doing actually we're doing our damage roll we're adding charisma modifier because we are picked our poison dragon and also we're adding 1d4 poison damage from our poisoner's roll so this lady will right now miss a lot of attacks she got disadvantage on saving throws it's easier to disable her with some spells like hold person for example and other stuff and this condition stays for 10 turns in total and also one more cool part that while this Vernalent Venom will use your action, you can use bonus action as Sorcerer to cast Cloud Kill. And why Cloud Kill is so cool and awesome? So again, a lot of people think uh, that it will do 5d8 damage, so from 5 to 40 damage. And for level 5 spells that's not enough. It covers really like large area in my opinion area is is really reasonable and pretty good one but what actually happens so let's do it in turn-based mode and i will explain you we're casting our cloud kill right now and she will be in cloud area she will receive this poison damage so she got resistance that's why we're doing 11 damage halved so down to five total damage but in reality, it should be 23 damage if target is not so resistant. But coolest part, it's not from 5 to 40. It's actually one more instance of this damage when this is, our target will start the turn. So now if I just skip all my turns, the next turn starts and she taking one more damage again. So in reality, it's 10 to 80 damage from level 5 skill. And 80 damage in area to all targets is like Call Lightning worthy, actually. And Call Lightning is actually super good because you can enhance damage of Call Lightning with water, but you can enhance damage of Cloud Kill with this Poisoner's Ring. And Cloud Kill can be recasted every turn for free without consuming any spell slots to different areas. And then you continue doing these two instances of this damage every turn. And before I show you what damage actually you can expect, let me give you suggestions for other gear. So we're doing a lot of attack rolls before end game. You can use Risky Ring from Act 2. You can get Necklace of Elemental Augmentation to do more damage with Cold and Fire cantrips or Lightning cantrips. And in the end game, you can actually like forget this 1d4 poison damage and get more spell save DC or more charisma. So Birthright to increase your charisma will be a nice one, or Hood of Weave for more spell save DC. So Rope of Weave will be like nice set too. And that's basically it. You don't need a lot of like some fancy gear to make this build work. 
So just stuff like Marke Hishkir will be enough to make you super powerful and also Marke Hishkir got Kireshka favor. And there's two favors that I recommend. You can go for Cataclysm, Sizzling Cataclysm that will give you Hunger of Hader, Warlock Spell and Melf's Acid Arrow and you will inflict noxious fumes on enemies. So when you cast in Cloud Kill, you will do spell damage and this will force enemies around in 3 meters take 1d4 acid damage. That's just a little bit of additional damage, but again, it's kinda adds up. Or you can go into full poison road and get Cloud Kill, one more Cloud Kill that not consuming any spell slot, and additional Ray of Sickness, again, not consuming spell slot. And also you will always inflict one turn of poison upon target. And that's basically damage you want to expect. So depending on how much targets stand against you, you can cast this stuff and try to make them vulnerable to poison damage. Right now, Endric is vulnerable to poison. This means he will take double damage from poison sources. And we used our action. So we can use Quicken Spell and cast Cloud Kill without consuming spell slot. Also, we can upcast it to level 6 in case we wish to do it. And now let's just look at the damage. Damage is just insane. So targets who are vulnerable to poison damage can take up to 80 damage on hit and they can take it two times in one single turn. So basically you're doing maximum 160 damage to a target in a turn. And that's like AOE, it's not single target, it's multiple targets, that's crazy. So up to three targets can take 160 damage. And that's insanely powerful and also role-playing build. Also, even in late game spells like Ray of Sickness will still work and do massive amount of damage, especially if you upcast it, for example, up to level four, you still can use this awesome spell. So you can use Twin Spell to cast it on two different targets and damage also will be like pretty reasonable and nice because you're not only doing poison damage also you add in your charisma modifier from your dragon ancestry and also additional poison from poison trails and yeah chromatic orb can be upcast upcasted too you can upcast it to level 4 and do this 5d8 damage damage also insane and it will be insanely hard for targets to survive I hope you enjoyed this awesome Baldur's Gates rebuild and also make sure to watch other cool builds on the screen right now and you will have blast playing them in Baldur's Gates 3. See you in the next videos.